Now, we were emphasizing the importance of solvents. The solvents should be such that they are also not toxic and they are having reasonable uh, boiling points not very low boiling points because it will uh, evaporate very readily and uh, uh, make the environment polluted. The solvents on they also should have reasonable sol solubility for the various uh, organic compounds. The reaction la use pundra thikhe solubility one. The, these are uh, requirements of green solvents mainly green solvents complete you, you will be able to recycle uh, that. Uh, you use it one time again distill uh, you may lose some amount or 10 percent loss and there 90 percent it is being um, uh, recycled and the recycle it will uh, pollute the factory and you must have proper collection system or uh, usually factories there will be uh, lower uh, pressure inside the factory than outside. So, air will that is called laminar flow air on the room the tubes you must be able to condense the vapor or uh, sometimes uh, the vapor on the acidic uh, you can put it in uh, sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate solution you can uh, absorb it. There are various ways of treating the uh, excess solvent. Renewable solvents are environment friendly. If you are able to recycle the solvent that is environment friendly. Water, methanol, ethanol, dimethyl formamide, DMF is called dimethyl formamide, acetonitrile, dioxane, acetone, furan, chloroform, benzene, ethyl acetate, toluene, carbon tetrachloride cyclohexane and hexane. There are the LLA solvent on the uh, they can be used, but not all of them are non-toxic. So, they are very non toxic. Benzene for example, is carcinogenic. It is not usually uh, used as the uh, solvent for reactions. Chloroform is uh, anesthetic. You can give the chloroform and uh, people will um, go into uh, deep sleep. Uh, it is it was used earlier for surgeries. Uh, furan is okay, toluene is okay. Once you put a methyl group on benzene, other one the toxic then a methyl group on the biodegradable. It can get oxidized to aldehyde, carboxylic acid, and other la on the environment la it can be easily biodegradable. Carbon tetrachloride is a very bad solvent. This chlorine is not easily removed. Environment, uh, it will st be stagnant, uh, it cannot be uh, very safe. Cyclohexane is okay, hexane is okay, but hexane has very low boiling point. Hexane la use pannaka, the it is used only in uh, uh, very very uh, contained uh, um, situations. The reactor should be contained at the end of the reaction, you should be able to get the E hexane out other on the recycle pandra uh, uh, Solvents have great influence of uh, the ratio of the products of the reaction where there are more than one product as outlined below. Solvent I use pannaka, the uh, proportion of uh, products if there are two products formed in a chemical reaction, one solvent I use pannaka, one proportion one. In order solvent use panna, in order proportion varo. And the solvent a different concentration la use panna ka, the product ratio will be different. Look at one of those reaction. So, this is another Diels Alder reaction. Instead of using uh, uh, butadiene, which is an open uh, compound, open chain compound, this is a cyclic compound, a cyclopentadiene. 5 carbons is pentane, cyclopentane, other uh, double bond, it is called cyclopentadiene. This is reacted with the um, ketone here with a double bond, it is called uh, acrolein, and this 
particular thing will produce a uh, few string this string plus this ring and the re remaining uh, ketone will be here. Of course, here the atom economy is 100 percent, but there are two products. This product is endo product. Suppose you have this uh, CH2 group here is above and uh, this CO group is below. This is called the endo product. Here substituent is called endo. In the substituent male it is called exo. These are the two different products that are formed in this reaction. This is the Diels Alder reaction. This uh, was investigated by uh, Professor R. Breslow. Uh, he, was, he was working in Columbia University. Uh, this is the publication JSCS, Journal of American Chemical Society, and uh, these are the year the volume number and the page number. The endo exo selectivity increased from 3.5 to 21.4 going from iso octane to water. The endo on the ethane lab it is 50 percent A to B is 76 to 24 50 percent ethane. Water lab 55 percent to 45 percent. This is the endo iso octane lab. This is the uh, endo is 1, water the rate is 740. Effect of solvent on ring opening of styrene oxide. This is uh, organic letters. Uh, 2005 year 7 3469. This is the styrene oxide. The styrene on the uh, double bond attached to the benzene ring. And on the, uh, if you treat it with oxygen under silver catalysis, it forms a three membered oxygen containing ring. It is called oxyrane. This is uh, the three membered ring. When you treat it with uh, diethylamine, it reacts at both the position either here or here. If it reacts here, you get this particular compound. If it reacts here, you get this compound. OH will come next to benzene ring and this will come on the second carbon atom. Here if you use ethane as the solvent, so yield is 50 percent, A to B is 76, 24. So, this is uh, 2 is to uh, 1. If you use uh, water, the yield is 92 percent and uh, both of them are close to each other 55, 45. So, the solvents have very important uh, uh, factor to determine the uh, ratio of the products when two products are formed in a reaction. And you can choose a particular solvent which produces the desirable amount for your synthesis. Then next is phase transfer catalyst. The phase transfer catalyst on the Suppose you, these are usually uh, made of uh, a very large hydrophobic group and it is ending with a hydrophilic group. The best example is uh, soap. Soap on the manala, the uh, fats and oils are hydrolyzed panni, soap under them. The hydrolyzed pannaka, the final product will be a carboxylic acid, a mixture of carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid la, uh, 8 carbon length RMH is 16, 18 carbon The 18 carbon chain at the end of it, 17 carbon chain at the end of it a carboxylic group is the uh, normal picture of a phase transfer catalyst. So, the catalyst will go, uh, the COOH group will be hydrophilic, it will that end will be in the sticking out of the water 
the other end the uh, uh, the large C 17 group will be sticking inside water. So, this is the uh, general structure of the uh, carboxylic acid uh, with the large amount of carbon. So, in the hydrophilic group will be out, hydrophobic group will be in and when you have a compound depending upon its polarity other than the highly polar and the it will be very near the surface. The highly unpolar and the it will be inside this uh, uh, phase transfer catalyst. The other one will be outside the phase transfer catalyst. Now, we will look at this phase transfer catalyst consists of a large hydrophobic hydrocarbon chain with the hydrophilic ionic group. With water it will form two phases. If mixed depending upon the solvent the two ends will be orienting themselves. So, that the polar end will phase outside in the case of hydrophilic solvents. In the non-polar solvents the hydrophobic end will phase outside as expected. I just mentioned that a spherical molecular aggregate called micelle is formed. This starts like in a so you have a beaker of water first all the water surface will be full of carboxylic acid. The inside the surface you have the carbon chain uh, which is the hydrophobic. So, it will form eventually a sphere all the carbon uh, chain will uh, accumulate together. So, it will be a sphere at the bottom you have a sphere at the top you have the end of the sphere containing the carboxylic acid. This particular spherical formation is called micelle m i c e l l e. Depending upon the a spherical molecular aggregate called micelle is formed depending upon the nature of the reactant micelle will be penetrated by reagents of similar properties polarities and reactions take place at great speeds. Once the micelle is formed dep you know, depending upon the micelle the micelle will be depending upon the solvent. If it is hydrophobic solvent the outside of the uh, sphere will be hydrophobic inside you have the hydrophilic group. But if it is like water which is hydrophilic in the uh, sphere you will have water sticking out and uh, the carbon chain sticking in. And then on the polar molecules in the, naga, the water surface will on the sphere sphere surface will go. Un, non polar molecules are in the, in the uh, sphere kula and the reactants uh, also based on the reactants the reactants may be polar or non polar according to the polarity of the solvent uh, and the reactant you will have ability of the reactants going into the same uh, area where either you have polar the polar molecule goes into polar area the reaction will be speeded up for polar molecules. If non-polar molecules go into non-polar part of the sphere the non-polar molecular reaction will take place very fast. One of the examples of uh, phase transfer catalyst this is one example CTAB this is a cetyl you, know, you have 16 uh, carbons and uh, a nitrogen which is uh, polar it is attached to 3 methyl group when you have 4 alkyl group nitrogen led in the other positive charge al um, alkanium ion or ammonium ion bromide is the counter ion. In the water in the N Me 3 plus will be on the surface and eventually form the sphere with this on the surface of the sphere. This will be inside the sphere this is cetyl ammonium uh, bromide. This is a tri tertiary butyl aluminum bromide tetra tertiary butyl aluminum bromide 4 uh, molecules of C 4. C 4 is a, in this case is a, a tertiary butyl group there are 4 tertiary butyl groups the tertiary butyl group is like this we have seen it earlier. So, this is the C 4 H 9 
and um, this is attached to the amino group and it will form this is the uh, four uh, carbons or put on the nitrogen either positive charge the uh, tetra um, tetra butyl aluminum uh, uh, ammonium bromide this is the other uh, paste transfer catalyst so in the catalyst la idu vandu either velila irukum or idu vandu ulla irukum or vice versa depending upon the polarity of the solvent polar ah irundha idu velila irukum non polar ah irundha idu velila irukum so this is a reaction conducted in uh, with in a micelle micelle na and the spherical uh, structure and the spherical structure la velila irukiradella polar ah irundha the water la reaction velila irukiradella non polar ah irundha the some organic solvent la so in this case the amine is um, reacted in the presence of ctab cetyl ammonium bromide this is uh, dinitro fluorobenzene reacting with uh, the aniline the aniline group displaces the fluorine and uh, this is the this is done in uh, micellar catalysis in cetyl uh, um, aluminum uh, cetyl ammonium bromide and uh, this reaction is very fast in this micelle this is the reference of the authors who did this reaction aromatic nucleophilic substitution with phase transfer catalyst with cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide ctab journal of american chemical society 1970 92 volume 356 page next another solvent which is totally different than all these things we have seen so far mostly organic solvents organic reactants and products now you have a totally different type of solvent this is called supercritical carbon dioxide this like the phase diagram of water the carbon dioxide am if you subject it to different temperatures and pressures and then the we were a phase form or the at 400 degrees and 10000 pressure milli pascal bar 83.8 bar its atmosphere you get this point from there up to here the pressure of about 100 milli pascal this is 72 atmosphere the 83.8 this is 1070 psi or the in pounds per square inch now if you have the pressure and temperature is 10000 and 400 degrees kelvin and 10000 um, milli pascal you get this portion up to this portion 100 and 400 comes or 300 comes this is in the form of a fluid it's called supercritical fluid if you change the conditions it will uh, become gas then this is the critical point where liquid supercritical fluid and critical point gas are all present in this point then you find gas in this area and liquid in this area so this is the phase diagram of uh, carbon dioxide uh, what is very important in the green chemistry lab the solvent on the we have seen different solvents organic solvents in our list kodutirundha solvent இது இது வந்து சார்ட் ஆஃப் இனார்கானிக் காம்பவுண்ட் இது வந்து கார்பன் டை ஆக்சைடு அட் வெரி ஹை டெம்பரேச்சர் அண்ட் ப்ரெஷர் ப்ரொடியூசஸ் திஸ் சூப்பர் கிரிட்டிக்கல் ஃப்ளூயிட் இது ஒரு சால்வெண்ட்டு இதை வந்து எம்ப்ளாய் பண்ணி சில ரியாக்ஷன்ஸ் எல்லாம் பண்ணலாம் இது பண்ணாக்க அட் தி எண்ட் வந்து தி சூ கார்பன் டை ஆக்சைட் கேன் பி டேக்கன் அவுட் அஸ் கேஸ் அண்ட் இட் கேன் பி ரீசைக்கிள்டு ஸோ இட் இஸ் என்வாயன்மெண்ட்லி வெரி ஃப்ரெண்ட்லி reactions using supercritical carbon dioxide 
I've taken olefin, uh, alkene, oxygen, catalyst and supercritical carbon dioxide as the solvent and do photolysis. In photolysis, you get a radical here and that reacts with oxygen which picks up uh, hydrogen. So, this is the compound that is formed. The double bond moves from there to here. One uh, electron moves here, the other electrons move here and reacts with oxygen and forms this uh, compound. This is the supercritical carbon dioxide uh, solvent reaction. This is uh, given in this paper singlet oxygen in supercritical carbon dioxide chemical communication 2008 4457 page number. This is another reaction supercritical carbon dioxide solvent. You have this uh, orthocresol, it is reacted with the bromine, hydrogen peroxide, sodium bromide, hydrogen peroxide, sodium bicarbonate, water, supercritical carbon dioxide at 40 degrees. So, what happens here? It does a bromination reaction. The yield depends on the presence of one or other of these compounds. So, what happens here is a uh, bromination of the orthocresol with bromine para to the hydroxyl group. Generally, other than electrophilic substitution, la, bromine Br plus attacks the para position. Uh, hydroxyl group, electron donating group, adhanala, the incoming Br plus gets attached to the para position. The, uh, the electrons here will move here, from here to here, from here to the Br plus. Water without sodium bicarbonate, if you do the reaction, the yield is 12 percent. Water supercritical carbon dioxide without bicarbonate, you get 54 percent. Water supercritical carbon dioxide with bicarbonate, you get 91 percent. So, the supercritical carbon dioxide and bicarbonate makes a lot of difference in the yield. This, reac this reaction is described in this paper. Oxidative bromination of phenol in supercritical carbon dioxide this is the journal Green Chemistry 2007 volume 9 page 26. Ionic liquids. This is another very interesting solvent. The ionic liquids has a melting point less than 100 degrees. In the recent years, ionic liquids uh, have established itself as a green solvent. They are, they are characterized as a non-molecular solvent with high thermal stability, low flammability, non-corrosiveness, moderate conductivity low viscosity and negligible vapor pressure, the whole lot of things. Uh, what it does is, it does a, uh, 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 the cation and an anion uh, and this uh, mixture of cation and anion uh, in, uh, in, uh, get this kind of properties for this liquid that its uh, melting point is less than 100 degrees and is able to do all these things, thermal stability, low flammability, non-corrosiveness, moderate conductivity, low viscosity and negligible vapor pressure. Negli negligible vapor pressure means the ionic liquid on the uh, gas or other. So, other on the, other on the uh, it will not pollute the factory atmosphere. Uh, Non-corrosive means uh, all the reactant vessels, they will last for a long time. High thermal stability means it can be easily recycled. The most common cation in ionic liquids is imidazolium ion. The other cations are ammonium, phosphonium, thiazolium, 
uh, and uh, triazolium, etc. Anions are usually tetrafluoroborate, hexaphosphate, tetrachloroaluminate. So, it is a um, product by the mixing of a positive charge ion from an organic compound and a negative charged ion usually from inorganic uh, um, reagent. The organic part is uh, imidazolium ion, it is uh, you will see what they are and ammonium ion you know, phosphonium ion that is also fa familiar to you, thiazolium ion and triazolium ion. Anions is tetrafluoroborate, we have seen this uh, earlier in the production of fluoro compound from diazo compounds. You make diazo tetrafluoroborate, heat it and you get fluoro compound. Hexaphosphate PF6, tetrachloroaluminate alum, AL with uh, 4 chlorine. Ionic liquids 6 MIM, this is uh, methyl imidazolium. This is the MIM stands for and the PF6, this is the phosphonium compound PF6, 1 cyclohexyl, 3 methyl imidazolium PF6, this is called 6 MIM. Uh, X6 stands for F6, PF6 and uh, methyl imidazolium compound, this is methyl imidazolium compound. This uh, cyclohexyl this is not shown as a letter. This 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium PF6 instead of uh, organic uh, instead of cyclohexyl group you get a butyl group. This is 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium PF6. This particular compound is produced and uh, by scientists and reported in the tetrahedron letters 2002 year 43 uh, volume 4993 page. So, to see this more clearly, this is called imidazole. When you have 5 membered ring with uh, 2 nitrogens, 1, 3 position, this is called pyrrole. This is called pyrrole, 5 membered ring with 1 nitrogen. When you have another nitrogen here, this is the imidazole. When you react the imidazole, usually this has a hydrogen. When you react with cyclohexyl bromide, this nitrogen here will react with cyclohexyl compound, HBr will go. And if you react with another molecules of uh, methyl bromide, methyl bromide will attach it to the other nitrogen and you have a quaternary salt. When you have four groups, two here, one here and one here, four groups you get the quaternary salt that is methyl cyclohexyl imidazolium bromide here. When you add PF6, you get the corresponding hexaphosphate. Therefore, this is MIM. PF6 minus. So, this is the compound which is the ionic liquid which has boiling point less than 100 with all the other properties, path of properties. Now. Organic reactions using A, A is this compound, this uh, methyl cyclohexyl imidazolium hexaphosphate, hexafluoroposphate. So, if you treat this aldehyde with uh, dicyanomethane. This is uh, derived from uh, malonic acid. The malonic acid is converted to uh, diamide and then dehydrated. You get uh, this CH2 CN twice and uh, this on reaction with this uh, amino acid in the presence of this uh, MIM, uh, 6 MIM and at room temperature this undergoes condensation of the aldehyde with this. This is called Knoenagel condensation 
this uh, forms anion and reacts with this aldehyde and eliminates a molecule of water and you get this diacyanol compound. This is called Knovenagel reaction, this condensation is uh, done in 6 mm PF6 tetrahedral letters 2001-42-6053. This is another reaction with uh, 6 mm hexafluoropasphate. You take uh, phenyl acetylene, this is phenyl acetylene reacted with KBr, hydrogen peroxide and ammonium molybdate and then treated with water in the presence of this uh, uh, organic this uh, solvent and 6 mm PF6 this ionic solvent. So, it uh, adds the bromine two bromines are added to the alkene and you get the water coming at uh, as COH which gets oxidized CO. This is the reaction where the acetylene is converted to dihalomethyl ketone. This is uh, reported in advanced synthetic catalysis 2005 year 347 volume 1341 page.